Remember, three of you, come and have lunch with me at Franco's Restaurant in London. We do it on a Friday. I won't be broadcasting later. It will be a proper lunch, if you understand what I mean. Um, bidding closes at 6.45 this evening. We're on £9,000 at the moment. You've got to be over 18 to take part. Go to lbc.co.uk. Terms and conditions, you can bid there. We will announce the result just after 6.45. On the 21st of September, I wrote a piece for the Daily Telegraph online. I said, in the 20 years nearly that I've been involved actively in EU politics, one thing has always been made abundantly clear to me. If Britain were ever to quit the EU, a free trade alternative would be offered to us. I was first told this while debating with EU Commissioner Neil Kinnock. On the Today programme back in 2001, I told Kinnock we should leave the EU. He replied, if we did so, a free trade deal would have to be negotiated. And I went on and talked about Valérie Giscard d'Estaing and virtually everybody who said, look, if you don't want to be part of our political project, our grand experiment, and you just want a trade deal, we think that will demote you, but it's entirely up to you. And I said in that piece, and I've said here on air, that if we were to go for a free trade deal, a Canada plus plus deal, or call it what you will, that actually the European Union would say yes. Why? Because German industry are making their views felt. Oh, they're telling Mrs Merkel. I mean, she probably looks even unhappier after she's met, met them than she normally does. They're being, t they're being told, Merkel, Juncker, Barnier, the others, the Germans need the UK car market. Do you know one in three BMWs that are sold around the world outside Germany are sold where? Here, the UK. No wonder they call our market Treasure Island. So the push is there. Mrs May has steadfastly refused to listen. And this afternoon, Donald Tusk, now he may not be my favourite human being, and I don't think he behaved terribly well with the British Prime Minister in Salzburg, but out of the blue, Donald Tusk puts this tweet out this afternoon. He says, from the very beginning, the EU offer has been a Canada plus, plus, plus deal. Much further reaching on trade, internal security and foreign policy cooperation. This is a true measure of respect, and this offer remains in place. So there you've got the President of the European Council saying we can have a free trade deal. Trouble is, folks, in my view, Theresa May doesn't want a free trade deal because she laid out in Florence that despite the fact we'd spent decades trying to opt out of bits of the European Union, having voted leave, she now wants to opt back in to bits of the European Union and they, and they accuse her of cherry-picking. I wonder, maybe actually, never thought I'd say this, but maybe actually the EU have a point. Maybe we are being a bit inconsistent with them. Maybe just a trade deal is what we need. What are the problems here? Well, the Canada deal is about tariff-free trade in goods, and you can add on and bolt on with the plus, 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 plus bit elements of services too. What are the upsides? Well, the upsides are no financial contributions. The upsides are no free movement of people. The upsides are absolutely no say from the European Court of Justice over life in Canada whatsoever. What are the downsides? Well, the downsides are because Canada has different regulations to the European Union, it means there can be checks on goods at the border. So I'm expecting some of you to come on and tell me that the barrier to this will be Northern Ireland. And indeed, Number 10's response so far to this is that it may be OK for the mainland, but it could be a problem for Northern Ireland. I think we'll answer that problem over the course of the next hour. Um, and what is it we want? What did Brexiteers actually want? Well, do you know, right from 1993, when I was there on the first day of this brand new party called UKIP, I used to say, we want to leave political union and replace it with a genuine free trade agreement, which is what we thought we'd signed up to in the first place. At least my parents' generation thought that's what it was. So this is a very interesting twist. Uh, does it, in terms of timing, uh, what, what does it do? Well, of course, it does sow discord in the Conservative Party. Of course, that's uh, clear. It totally undermines Mrs May's speech yesterday and her position heading into these critical talks on the 18th of October. So maybe... Maybe I'm being naive. Maybe me taking this at face value. Uh, you know, perhaps I'm being led up the garden path by Donald Tusk. But it is interesting 
that the response to this this afternoon, as I say, Downing Street saying, well, OK for the mainland, but it would be a problem for Northern Ireland. The response to this, from me, I said we should bite their arm off. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg has said it's a very good offer. Um, other Eurosceptics are for it. From the pro-Remain camp, from the Lord Adonises, from the Alistair Campbell, Sir Nicholas Clegg and the others. Do you know what they've said this afternoon? Not a dicky bird. Because they're blindsided by this. Because they know that if we reached a free trade deal with the European Union, overwhelmingly, this country would support it. And their campaign for a second referendum, their campaign to suspend Article 50, would be completely and utterly poleaxed. So, is the EU now saying what you want to hear? And if you think, as I do, great. They've said it, it couldn't be clearer, they want a free trade deal, but us to leave the political club completely, call me on 03456060973. If you think maybe there's a terrible catch somewhere, uh, you know, a sort of card that is being hidden by Donald Tusk, then tell me by texting 84850. And maybe, folks, just maybe, the one barrier between a successful Brexit for us and for the exporters of German motor cars and everybody else in Europe is somebody called Theresa May. And if that's how you feel, please tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, Facebookers, you can comment there too. On Facebook, Jackie says, just walk away, just walk away, no deal, don't trust them. Jackie, I've got no problem with no deal, no deal, no problem. We've got to sort a few things out, like flights and how we deal with stuff at Dover, and there might be a few bumps in the road, but overall, I've got no problem with no deal. But you know, Jackie, actually, going for a simple free trade deal, I think in terms of a very smooth transition through would be great, and folks the other benefit is if we go for this given that we are currently in full regulatory alignment with the european union the negotiation time should be about a fortnight there is nothing to negotiate here we are absolutely working on the same rule book as of this moment in time there is no reason why a free trade deal cannot come into effect at 11 p.m on march the 29th next year no need for a transition deal, Britain free to start striking its own deals around the rest of the world. The Remainer Prime Minister apparently doesn't agree. I wonder what Rudy, who's calling from Exeter, makes of this. Good evening, Rudy. Hi, Nigel. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, as you know, uh, politicians have a way of twisting things and saying things for their own advantage. Now, it says Canada plus, plus, plus. Uh -huh. So what does that mean? Does it mean Canada plus we stay in the single market. Canada plus, we stay in the customer union. Canada plus, we have to have free movement of people. What does that mean? Do you well, see what I mean? Well, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, so far, so far, Rudy, when, when we've talked about Canada plus, 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 we've talked about tariff-free trade on goods plus services. Now, you're quite right. It could be that Donald Tusk means something entirely different different but i don't think he does well you say that but the thing is it's like theresa may with a language that speech she made it something then and now it's something different well <laughs> I okay rudy i tell you what i tell you what i think you're quite right to ask questions about his sincerity and i understand that completely but wouldn't it be worth pursuing this actively as of nine o'clock tomorrow morning as a real conversation as opposed to what Downing Street appear to be doing which is giving it the brush off. I absolutely agree with you but if you remember a few days ago during the, the, the Conservative conference they, they clearly said the Canada deal was not on the table. What it is? What it is? It is. I, Rudy, I've been saying for months, it is. They're wrong. Thank you. What does Greville in, in Kellerworth think? Greville, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Um, yes, I, I, you could knock me down with the proverbial feather today <laughs> when, I saw, when I saw Tusk's uh, tweet. Yes. And I thought, you know, there's something been going on in the background. And I mean, what has been going on? What's on the table? What's not on the table? And Tusk comes up with this and puts his authority behind it. And I say, well, let us believe in the first instance that it's true what he says. It's a straightforward deal. Yep. And you then come back to the idea that May has been fiddling around at something, and we haven't known about this. Well, I've and it seems like... Greville, I've, no I've known for 20 years. 
For 20 years, they've been telling me, if you want a simple free trade deal, you can have it. I've been arguing this. I've been whistling in the wind. But I think it's there to be done. And do you know what, Greville? Even if Tusk is not being sincere, shouldn't we actively pursue this? Well, I think the premise ought to be that he is sincere, and this is a fair offer, because in business, and I, I'm in business, uh, my premise with anyone is, whatever they say to me, well, that's a fair offer, and let's li- debate it, let's look at it, right. let's negotiate it. So, should Mrs May open her ears and start to run with this? I think she ought to look at it in depth and detail, and all those clever people around her, you know, clever between inverted commas, <laughs> they ought to look at it, uh, and look at it with a critical eye, and think that, yes, Mr Tusk, is genuine, he is a man of honour, and let's deal with him okay. until he proves otherwise. Do you mean all those clever people around a gravel that, that have never run a business like you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we can name, name some names. Is it Oily Robinson or something like well, that? Well, not virtually all of them, Greville, actually. Greville, thank you very much for your point of view. I get here on Twitter. As a Remainer, I think accepting the Canada plus, plus, plus trade deal would be the best option for the UK, and so do. There was a poll done on this. Having posted a poll on this a few weeks ago, and between No Deal and Canada... There was well over 40% of people saying yes. Uh, Checkers had about 11%. Remain had about 20%. And I reckon that's pretty indicative of where we are. Would a Canada plus 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 deal cost the UK 39 billion? If so, that's perhaps why Tusk has offered it, says Paul in Croydon. Paul, Canada did not pay a cent for their trade deal with the European Union. If... Tusk is being sincere. If that is what on the table, we should, as I tweeted earlier on today, bite his arm off. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. The time is now 6.15. Donald Tusk says the European Union has always wanted a Canada plus, plus, plus deal. He seems amazed we haven't taken up the opportunity. I've been amazed since day one. We haven't taken up the opportunity. Although, you know, there are reasons to be thoughtful about this. And Lynn on Facebook says it sounds so good. But is it good, too good to be true? Sue says, Canada deal sounds brilliant. I'll have that. Sue, most of the country would say that. Jenny says, sounds good, but don't trust the EU to agree properly. Jenny, you may be right, but why not actively, vigorously pursue it? Well, there's a barrier here, folks. There's a problem. And she lives in number 10. And as Joe fairly accurately points out on Twitter, what the hell is going on? Why is it Mrs May taking this? Are we now exposing May's true Ramona motives who never wanted to take us out? Joe, you sound like a conspiracy theorist. The trouble is, it's not that difficult to believe you might have a point. So what is the problem? I mean, wow, there's enthusiasm coming in here. Yes, 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 Nigel, it's a no-brainer. If it's not accepted, then it can only mean our political classes want to stay in the EU for their own personal reasons, says Chris in Otter Shaw. What does Canada plus 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 mean for the English expats living in the EU, who Theresa May wrote a letter to claiming that we were a priority back at Christmas? Lee, who lives in Frankfurt. Uh, Lee, I can't give you where these negotiations end totally. What I can tell you is that the Prime Minister is pursuing a policy that that uh, is not wanted in Brussels. And if it is accepted, it'll mean further massive concessions to be made in two weeks' time. And that he's going to split her own party in Parliament and that probably to get through, she'll need to use a motion of confidence. She could even bring her own government down. There are better ways of doing this. But the Prime Minister has been utterly convinced by the EU argument over the Irish border, something that was barely raised in the referendum campaign at all. I think Cameron might have mentioned it once, but it was barely... I was never asked about it at all, ever, in 23 years of campaigning up until that referendum. But she's convinced there is a major problem. Just before we went on air, I spoke on the phone to the Member of Parliament for East Antrim, Sammy Wilson. He's a DUP MP, one of the ten MPs propping up this government. He is the Brexit spokesman for the DUP. I asked him, what does Canada plus 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 mean? He said, it would be a great thing, it would deliver Brexit, and in terms of any difficulties over the Irish border, problem number one that keeps being raised is the collection of taxes. Well, with tariff-free, there wouldn't be any collection of taxes, that problem disappears. And problem number two that will be raised by some as being an issue would be different regulations, therefore a check on the standard of goods. Well, as he says, on day one, we've for the last 43 years, 
gradually built exactly the same rule book on agriculture, goods and everything as the rest of the European Union, this can be implemented with no issues on the Irish border at all. If in five or ten years' time our economy has diverged significantly in regulatory terms, there may be an issue to talk about. But to begin with, he believes, as their Brexit spokesman, that it solves the Northern Irish issue. If you agree with that or disagree with that, it's 0345 6060 97 Three. Let's go to Fatima, a new caller from Sudbury. Fatima, good evening. Uh, good evening to you, Nigel. Uh, my mind is bubbling. Uh, one thing I don't understand, Nigel, is, yeah. uh, first of all, all these uh, options of Brexit, why were they not, uh, why was it not being brought forward uh, early into the negotiations? Now we've got every coming up with the Canada, oh, I this, know, that. I know, I know. Uh, Boris bringing up Doncaster, which at that time, why didn't he back it up? And the, may, the other question that I would like you to clarify is this. When members of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say members, okay, uh, Theresa May's supporters in mm. her own uh, party say, oh, well, Canada is not on the table, neither is this. Uh, you know, checkers. Uh, checkers is not on the table. Uh, the EU have refused it. Yes. Her, her own party, re- half of it is against it. Brexiteers and Ramoners uh, uh, don't want it. Uh, the country the doesn't other, want it, Fatima. The country doesn't want it. it. No. So what, what I don't understand, when she says this is the only thing on the table, how is it on the table? Okay, uh, okay, okay. The, the so, EU have already refused it. To answer your questions, number one, as I said earlier, I literally, from the first time I stood for UKIP back in 1994, said, I want a genuine free trade deal, not political union. So I've thought this was the right way to go. I've campaigned for it all through my political life. And during all those long years in the European Parliament, I've been told by Giscard d'Estaing, Commissioner Kinnock and many others, that this was the alternative. Why have we not gone for it before? Well, because uh, I'm afraid we've had a government and a prime minister who haven't really believed in it. In terms of checkers, uh, you, you, Fatima, you're quite right. You know, only 11% of the country think checkers is the right way forward, and I suspect most of those, of those 11% are loyal Tory party members saying that because they want to back up their Prime Minister. We will never get the checkers deal. If we go down that route, we will get checkers minus, which means something much worse than checkers. Uh, but the problem is, Fatima, I'm afraid the influences on many of our big politicians in Westminster come from you know, the giant multinationals, one or two of the big banks, people who want the status quo to be maintained. But, Fatima, let me just ask you very quickly, and thank you, by the way, as a new caller to the show. Let me ask you, do you think what Donald Tusk has said this afternoon offers us an opportunity? It does, because in, in terms of the, the Irish border, because uh, our goods, the, 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 if... If the problem is uh, in regards to the quality control, can be it can be easily be drafted up a quality control uh, uh, agreement, and uh, it's a free tr- trade. There is no yep. money. Uh, there is no taxes being paid. Yep. Yep. So what is the issue, I, I, Fatima? I don't know, Mrs. May. Please call oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Answer Fatima from Sudbury. She's asking, what's the issue? What's the problem? I am with her. Chris says, this deal sounds fantastic. We should agree to it immediately. No, Chris, we must We must just make sure that he is being absolutely genuine and sincere. Um, as Violet says on Twitter, read the small print and do it several times. Well, of course, Violet, we do need to do that. But I do think, in terms of direction of travel, it's great. And why is it happening now, folks? I'll tell you why it's happening now. Because there has been this narrative about the potential of no deal. Right? No deal, no problem. We'll live with it. There might be a few bumps in the road, but it would deliver Brexit. There's one group of people who no deal really hurts. The French wine producers, the German car makers, who need this market. They are applying huge pressure onto the leaders of France and Germany and indeed the European Commission. And that, I think, is why uh, this, this, this idea has got the salience today that it has. Jeanette on Facebook says, Chuck Checkers, this is a step in the right direction. Let's go to Northern Ireland and speak to Anne. Anne, we're going to hear a lot about Northern Ireland in the next couple of days. We are. And good evening, Nigel. Good evening. I'm ringing you up to ask you a question because I trust you that you'll tell us the truth. Does this Canada Plus deal mean a border down the Irish Sea? 
there, no, there is no... Well, well, <laughs> Anne, there is no reason at all why it should. Uh, you know, Downing Street's response to this has been that it may be a good deal for the mainland, but it could be a big problem for Northern Ireland. But they seem, and to want to believe there's a problem with Northern Ireland every time it's raised. Exactly. Because they seem... Basically, most of this cabinet, Anne want to keep us in regulatory alignment with the rest of the European Union. They want Brexit to be simply in name only. I, as I said to you, Anne, I spoke to Sammy Wilson before the show. He is the DUP's Brexit spokesman. He thinks this could solve the Irish border question and allow us to move on. And you know what? I think he's right. Uh, you see, the problem with Mrs May is her speech yesterday was brilliant, but it's a fantasy, and I just don't really trust her. And she keeps going on that if we don't accept checkers, she's not go- she, she, ha- she, she's, she has the checkers deal because it's the only deal available because she won't compromise Northern Ireland and all this business about the border. Yeah. Now, I live here, and that border is manned regularly. Mm. The Garda and the PSNI picking up undesirables is trying to cross what? And that is what? a fact. And the, absolute and the, smu- the, and the smuggling of goods. Not all that long ago. Pictures of them actually doing checks. And the smuggling of goods, Anne, because there are different VAT rates, different uh, excise duties. Yeah, the idea there's no border today between Northern Ireland and the Republic is a complete fantasy, isn't it? It is. It is. And I wouldn't curve the block to look tomorrow, to be honest with you, because there's wide ranging consequences if that border is left open and unmanned for whenever we do exit and they can come from, they can make their way into uh, the EU, so to speak, and illegally cross the border. Well, here. well, well, I get that. However, Anne, of course, Ireland is not in the Schengen zone, which, 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 which is a big, big step forward. And I share your scepticism about this government. James says, why can't we say no tariffs on any goods entering Britain? That's going to really open up trade into Britain. Then see who puts tariffs on British goods going to you. Well, we could, James, one of the ideas, <coughs> one Brexit idea, is that we unilaterally declare we're not going to ta- we will not charge tariffs to anybody and see how they reciprocate. That is one possible way forward, and you would ally that to cuts in taxation, etc. That is... James, if we can't come, if there's no agreement of any kind at all, we could finish up in that situation. It could be the big generous offer to make, but we're not at that stage yet. You know, there are still, seems to me, still, as I've argued for the last few weeks here, every reason to believe that actually a good common sense deal can be done. If it can't, we'll leave without it. But all the while we've got the chance of a common sense deal, and Mr Tusk has at least, you know, put out that olive branch today, we should pursue it. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.30 in time. This is your last chance this year. You won't hear that again, OK? This is about LBC's charity, Globals Make Some Noise, a charity supporting small, brilliant proj- projects across the UK, helping children and their families living with illness, disability or a lack of opportunity. I did this last year. We raised an awful lot of money for charity. What is it you're bidding for? Well, it's lunch on a Friday with me for three of you at Franco's Restaurant here in central London. Top place. Great stuff. Uh, I won't be broadcasting that evening. I may even have a glass of something with you. We'll talk a bit about Donald Trump and what he's like in real life. Juncker, whether he has a brandy early in the morning. That kind of thing. It'll be fun. Um, how do you do it? Well, you've got eight minutes left. Eight minutes and ten seconds left. Um, it closes at 6.45 tonight. Uh, you've got to go to lbc.co.uk to bid. The highest bidding at the moment is just over £9,000. Eight minutes left to come. Raise some money for LBC's charity. Globals make some noise. Have lunch with me on a Friday afternoon. You've got to be over 18 to take part. All the terms and conditions are there. If you want to get involved, lbc.co.uk. Globals make some noise. For those who don't get heard on LBC. So let's stick with Donald Tusk. Let's stick with this surprising to many tweet that he puts out this afternoon saying, from the very beginning, the EU offer has been a Canada plus 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 deal. Actually, Tusk did say this on the 7th of March last year, so there is a certain consistency to what he's saying. Much further reaching on trade, international security and foreign cooperation. This is a true measure of respect. This offer remains in place. He does, Tusk, by the way, say this afternoon that one thing they would expect from us is he'd like genuine respect from us. He doesn't want the Foreign Secretary comparing them to the Soviet Union. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if this offer of a genuine free trade deal along the lines that Canada did, with some things bolted on, is genuine, I'll stop 
being unpleasant towards them in the European Parliament. I'll even stop attacking Mr Verhofstadt if this is genuine. Boy, that takes a bit of saying, I've got to tell you. Now, there are some questions here because Karen from Stoke Poges says, which is better? A free trade deal with our payment of billions or WTO rules with no payment to the EU? Chris, you see, takes the view. He says, she needs this. It's the £40 billion cherry on top of the cake. Do yourself a favour and take it. Well, nothing about money has been discussed. But, Karen, the Canadians didn't pay a cent for their trade deal with the European Union. And there's no reason why we should be handing over £40 billion sterling to have a deal a bit like Canada with a bit bolted on for services. All of that is part of this negotiation. That is the detail where we have to find out just how genuine Donald Tusk is being. But hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. That's my view. What does Robert in Basildon make of it all? Good evening. Hi, Nigel. Thank you for letting me on your show. Not a bit. Again. Not a bit. Um, I, I personally agree with the uh, Canada Triple Plus deal. I think it would be a fantastic opportunity for this country. Uh, Canada, Canada is not an unsuccessful country. It's got a GDP, uh, GDP per capita higher than our own. And it's actually better off economically in many instances than we are. Robert, um, ro how... ro Robert, speak a bit more clearly into the mouthpiece, please. Oh, um, I don't consider the Canada deal to be a bad deal. I think they've got a very high GDP per capita, and they're a very successful country economically. They are. Um, for Northern Ireland, I think a technological border with automatic number plate recognition cameras and other technological bits here and there would be a fantastic idea. It would stop that hard border that we've well, been worrying well, about. Well, well, Robert, if we haven't got a collect, customs juices, difficult to see what the problem is at all. Robert, I thank you very much indeed for your call. I, Derek says, Tusk is not an EU negotiator. His remarks are irrelevant. He said the UK has to solve the Irish border issue before agreement can be achieved. But this is impossible. No, Derek, nothing's impossible if you have the political will. Everything is possible. And I would say this to you. Tusk may, mo may not be the negotiator in the way that Barnier is, but remember Tusk's job. He is the permanent president of the European Council. Who are the European Council? They are the 28 governments that make up the European Union. He's getting pressure from governments who are saying, for goodness sake, grow up. Let's have a free trade deal with one of our best markets in the world. So I do think, actually, Tusk's comments are really pretty important. How can you be pleased if we stay in the customs union, says Helen from Market Drayton. We're not staying in the customs union. Canada is not in the customs union. Canada is not in the single market. Canada has a tariff deal, a free trade deal, an FTA, as they're known. This is what I've wanted for 25 years. We can't have it. We just say, cheer everybody, we're off. No deal, no problem, few short-term bumps in the road. There's a chance here to go for something infinitely better than checkers. Now, Nat says to me, Nigel Farage, you are talking absolute rot. Canada has agreed to, quote, all imports from Canada have to satisfy EU rules and regulations. Canada plus 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 would require alignment, except we would not be part of the rule makers. You are talking far from common sense. Nat, if we sell goods to America, we have to comply with American rules. We sell goods to Japan. We comply with Japanese rules. We sell goods after this deal to the European Union. We'll have to comply with their rules. But why would you, Nat? For 12% of your economy, which is selling goods to Europe, buying the other 88% who have never and will never trade with Europe in their lives. Anywhere in the world where you sell a product, you have to conform to somebody else's rules. But no one suggested we're going to have a seat in the US Congress. It ain't going to happen. This is about us being a self-governing nation, making our own rules. But yes, of course, our goods have to comply all over the world with what other people's rules say and by the way it works in reverse that us taking stuff in from the rest of the world people would have to comply with our rules that is part of what being a sovereign nation state is all about i'm going to worcester to talk to anna good evening anna um hello you probably don't remember me but i spoke to you several months ago before the checkers deal came to light and we spoke about the initial terms and we discussed the uh, Northern Irish backstop and how it should never have been put in there. Never been and agreed would to. have a, a marked problem on us being able to do a free trade deal. Yep. Dominic Raab said yesterday, quite categorically, the reason why we can't agree a Canadian-type deal is because it will put a border down the Irish Sea. Why? Um, well, I don't know the nitty-gritties of no. it, but... I, 
But why, Anna? I mean, I mean, isn't this... I mean, I do agree with you, by the way, that, that, that for her to leave Downing Street at 4.15 in the morning to fly off to Brussels at the behest of an unelected foreign bureaucrat to sign up to some ridiculous backstop was, was, was crazy. But if the whole basis of our negotiation is changing, let's get rid of the backstop. Yeah, but the problem is, it clearly does make a difference because Tusk or Juncker, whichever one, or Barnier, whichever one it is, is, on, is insisting on keeping it there. So if they're insisting on keeping it there, it must be because well, it's, it's dealing with Ireland differently. Well, it ha- and that's the point. Well, they haven't said that today. And all right, that's the first thing they should be challenged on, and that's the reason, Anna, that I spoke to. Yeah. You, you know, it's the reason I spoke to the DUP I mean, b- said b- before speech. coming on the air. Boris said in his speech, and nobody picked up on it yesterday. Um, we ha- uh, we have to, uh, not yesterday, Tuesday. Two days ago, yeah. We have to get rid of the Northern Irish backstop. Yep, 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 yep. Well, let's do that as part of this new negotiation that we could reopen tomorrow right. if because we had if the wit to do it. If it doesn't make a difference, then why have it there? And that's what I'm saying to Anne. It must. It, it must have some issue that it treats Northern Ireland differently, well, or else why have yeah, it I there? Mean, ever since she agreed to that, our whole negotiating strategy seems to have been based around that and keeping the UK, yeah. all of it being treated the same. And I, I cannot, for the life of me, see why there should be any demand for a border down the Irish Sea with a sensible trade agreement, which would mean no collection of taxes for goods moving between the north of Ireland and the Republic, and where we start with, with actually our rules the same. I can't see it. Anna, I thank you. Tristram is a brand new caller from the Isle of Man. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Uh, we said hello when you came over for your talk a few years ago, um, but obviously you wouldn't remember. Uh, okay, well, one... I'm coming back in February, Tristram. I'll, I'll be in the Isle of Man in February, but uh, anyway, far away. Uh, yeah, there'll be another full house, I'm sure. OK, <clears throat> uh, one main point, but before I make it, what Donald Tusk actually said today regarding uh, Northern Ireland is on the website. He says, we will not give up seeking a workable solution that fully respects the Good Friday Agreement as well as the integrity of the single market and the customs union. Note the diplomatic language, mm. we will not give up seeking. That mm. is not the same as we demand, and I think it indicates a softening of the position. And I think... I, I'm going to suggest why. The sensitivity about leaving with no deal has always been given as the supply chains, car manufacturers, good, etc. Good, goods going back and forth across borders, yeah. Yeah, right. Now, I'm a retiree from the airline industry, and I'm going to um, put up the situation of Airbus for consideration. Airbus is one of two global aircraft manufacturing industries. The aircraft are made in Britain, France, Germany... Spain. So British parts, i.e. wings, are made in the northwest mm-hmm. of this country, yep. transported across the supply chain, um, bolted onto the fuselage, etc. Now, there is a complex supply chain in that. Now, do you suppose that if we left without a deal and that supply chain was halted even for a day, that that situation would endure? I would suggest that the companies, Airbus would be on the blower to their national governments in France, Germany and Spain. The governments would be on the blower to the European Union and they would kick their butts and make the supply chain work. Yeah, because there is yeah, no yeah, way yeah. that Europe is going to give up its, in the its end, equal dominance in that yeah. global industry. In, now, the end, in the interest of money talks, doesn't it? In the yeah, end, money no, talks. Sort out the supply chain for... Um, making an airline, which obviously includes some minutiae of different tiny parts that have to go back and forth, then that's the default. They will have to do it for every other sensitive supply chain from day one, because the ruckus across Europe, if those industries are compromised will be by huge. the EU yeah. taking a political stance, and isn't will, that, will Tristan, bring it down. Isn't that why Donald Tusk is saying what he's saying? Because businesses are putting real pressure on him. That's right, and they know that if there's no deal... They are going to have to bend over backwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Tristan, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Time is out. The auction's now closed. We've raised over £9,000 for that lunch. I'll look forward to finding out who the three winners are. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show. It's now 6.46. If the European Union want Canada Plus Plus Plus, hadn't we better get on and try and see whether there's any catch to it? Strikes me as being really rather a good idea. In America, the saga over Judge Kavanaugh and his elevation to the Supreme Court is, I think, coming towards a close. The FBI report is in today. One or two of the Republican senators who've been very critical, um, potentially of Kavanaugh, have said it's a good, thorough report. I think he will get on to the Supreme Court. Though, of course, if the midterm elections, you know, turn Congress around and give the Democrats a majority, uh, they might try and remove him. They might try 
try to remove Trump. I mean, who's to say? But I think that saga is coming to an end. Leon Facebook says the EU is conscious of being under the scrutiny of history. This game of musical chairs is going to be won by who gets in the last conciliatory word. It's a good point, Lee, because it is a big historic break, and yeah, maybe some people wouldn't want to look too petulant. However, I do get by tech, Tusk is trying to split the Tories and the country in the hope of a second referendum straight Labour government. Let me tell you, whoever sent that, it won't split the country. The polling is very, very clear. A very big majority of people, you know, uh, by by over two to one, favour this type of deal or just leaving over staying, you know, remaining in the European Union. I think this would actually unite the country. I agree, though, it is very divisive within the Tory party. And potentially, if Mrs May rejects this, sends her off to Brussels in a couple of weeks' time in a very much weaker position. Dave asks, does this deal stop free movement? If it does, fantastic. Of course it does, Dave. There is no free movement between Japan or Canada, both of whom have trade deals. Let's crack, crack, crack through some callers. Paul is calling from Sutton Coalfield. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Nigel. So um, tonight, I, I don't think I've really ever thought I'd ever agree with you on anything. Right. <laughs> but, but, but tonight, I was shocked. I've um, I'm an absolute Remainer. I yes. want a second referendum. I absolutely do not want us to leave Europe. But as this has been dragging out, and the mess and the uncertainty that this gives us as a country a deal like this that seems to be on the table i completely agree with you why don't we just take it and run good lord well paul i, I this this damascene uh, conversion live on air here on lbc <laughs> uh, paul do you know what i think it is i mean clearly we've got to look at the small print as others have said absolutely of course absolutely. But, but but if we take this at face value and if i'm right if i'm right in thinking that European business is now putting massive pressure on the EU establishment and saying, come on, let's grow up, let's grow up, let's just, let's, let's maintain really close relations with the UK, let's maintain free trade, let's move on, you know, a great relationship, but on a different basis. I'm with you, Paul, take it a run, and thank you for that phone call. Thank you very much indeed. Well, there you are. You could knock me down with a feather. John is calling from Croydon. John, hi, what do you make of it? Hello, Nigel. Yeah, of course we should take this Canada-style trade deal. The only thing is, we it's not Mrs May that's making the decisions, Nigel. It's Oily Robbins. Oily Robbins. Um, Ollie Robbins yeah, is his real the, name, folks. But I, but Oily <laughs> Robbins. Yeah. He's the man that's pulling the strings here, I think, <coughs> Nigel. And uh, yeah. he's the one we've we've got to get to, really. The other thing is... Um, how, do we, how, how, do about, we get, how do we get to a faceless bureaucrat, whether they're in Brussels or London? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> the other thing is, Nigel, you said earlier on about the Irish border issue. Nobody yeah. really mentioned this. You know, the only time this was brought up is when Dom- uh, Ken Clark, Dominic Grieve <laughs> and Anna Soubry went to see Barnier. Yes. That was when the Irish issue became a problem. Yes, and they terrified the Prime Minister. And there's, yeah. no, there's no threat to the Good Friday Agreement or anything else. This, is, this yeah. has been used as a means to keep mm-hmm. the UK in regulated alignment. The British Prime Minister swallowed it, but there's now something better on the table. Let's go for it. John, thank you. I'm going to move on. By having the backstop agreed, we cannot trust... We cannot have Canada plus 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 unless the EU drops the backstop. Well, uh, I think all the talk, even about Ireland, is a lo- is now and that border is now a lot more constructive. It's a fake offer, as you know. Doesn't include Northern Ireland provisions. Eddie, let's talk about it because if there's no need to collect taxes and if there's no need to check product because we have the same standard rules, what's the issue? Maybe this actually is the solution. Sean is calling from Stoke on Trent. Hi, Sean. Oh, good afternoon, Nigel. I'm, um, unlike the uh, last, uh, not the last one, but the uh, one before, yeah, before that. Um, I'm not quite in contrast in saying uh, I'm a Remainer, um, more of a least supporter. But I'm smiling, but I- I'm saying I'm going to say maybe uh, if it's a no string, uh, no strings attached deal, as I phrase yes. it myself, um, then m- maybe yeah, I'll accept it from Tusk. Uh, but I- I'll reject, I'd say, the close relations because uh, that that he said well. It's well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, OK, he talked about cooperation on security and things like that. And, hey, yeah. you know, why wouldn't we want to do those things with our next door neighbours? They're good common sense things to do. Sean, I understand 
you know, mm. your your reticence. I understand the need to dot the I's and cross the T's. But what do you think the Prime Minister says tomorrow morning? Does she say, we like what we hear, we're going to pursue this? Or does, she, or does she say, we're sticking to checkers? I'll pray if she does come in like a dancing queen and say, yes, I'll go ahead like this. <laughs> well, but, I tell you what, Sean, now we know she can dance, maybe anything's possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on her part, and as you said before, um, uh, maybe some of this is awful, but um, I'm still sceptical on our side due to the checkers deal mm. that Theresa May pushed. So it, it's uncertainty with Theresa May, but I'm glad to see that it's either a white flag fine, or it's just a, here you go, here's your deal now, bugger off the rest of you. Well, um, which, which, of, whichever yeah. it is, Sean, it's worth pursuing, and you and I agree on that. we just got to be careful. Thank you. Alison says this could be just the offer we need. But how do you persuade the PM and Rob to change course when what they want to do is for us to stay in the EU? I don't think Dominic Rob wants us to stay in the EU, um, but... You're right, Alison. Pressure must be applied. My last caller on this subject tonight is a new caller to the show. It's Rhys from Surrey. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Welcome. So... I've uh, waited a long time to get on. Have you? Well, I'm... So, I, do you know, yeah. some people call and get straight through, and others say, God, we've been trying for months. But anyway, Rhys, you're here. You've got the floor for yeah. 40 seconds. Shoot. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm very much against taking this, uh, this offer from Donald Tusk. I just... Something about the EU and the way they've been this, this entire way through, it's just ridiculous. They, they, they seem disingenuous. They always have. Um, and he talks, he talks of genuine respect. I mean, he's never shown Britain respect. But none of them have. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm 16 and even I can see that they're, they're untrustworthy. Um, well, may, may, believe- may, maybe, Reese, they've been rebuked by BMW and people like that. Maybe so, but still, business businesses will put pressure on them. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to have some way that they want to twist our arm later. Right. Reese, Reese, time is. I'm. So, I wish you know. And you're 16, and it's great to have you on the show. Just quick, straight answer. Should we at least pursue it and give it a try? Yes. Okay, good stuff. Reese, thank you. You've got the last word. You've been listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. I'll be back in this chair on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. At 10 tonight, it's Tom Swarbrick. But up next, it's Ian Dale. I feel positively underdressed. Well, I'm going out to dinner. It's sat here in a.